Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. There's no gospel being preached there. There's only uh, false religions. So we're going to be going down there and just preaching Christ. We're not there to tell them they're wrong. Uh, we're there to tell, to tell them about God who will tell them that they're wrong right. and uh, show them their need of the gospel. And uh, as the gospel is preached there, my prayer is that God will send us a man to the church in Beckway. Uh, from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelations, this Bible, every page, every word is speaking of Christ. Amen. What is missions? It's Jesus. We can't find a place that missions is not. As the church, and as a, say, as a saved believer, we are the light. Our job is not to occupy a pew. Our job is not to just come to church and sing, and that's great. Our job is not to be cleaners of the aquarium, or keepers of the aquarium, but to be fishers of men. But again, this Jerusalem, then forgot to go to Judea, sure. places nearby. Sure. As with Puerto Rico, people say, well, surely somebody's reached them already. And the, the, the mindset which has been wrong. We have to realize that it starts here when it goes out. We're excited about getting to go home and be with the Lord, but we don't want to leave anybody behind right. that should go with us. He's living with his sister right now, and his sister's uh, just about as bad as his mom. But who's going to tell him about God? Who's going to raise him up in a godly heritage that he can hear about God if I don't go? So Brother Joseph is on the far side. Brother Joseph got saved. Life of drugs, alcohol, 47 years old. All he ever known was marijuana and drugs. Climbed off the ladder at the age of 47 years old and asked Christ to save him. He went home, threw out all of his drugs, threw out his alcohol, quit going to the bars, quit going to hang out with the women. You know what he did? What he told me? He said, Brother David, he said, I don't need those things anymore. Amen. He said, I've got Christ. Amen. He said, I don't need them. Probably one of the happiest guys you'd meet. If he put a suit on, you'd think he's a millionaire. Nobody can go over there and be a humanitarian and change the morality of what they do. But we can take the light of the Lord Jesus Christ to them and get them under old-time, old-fashioned preaching of the Word of God, let the Holy Ghost convict their heart, and then be saved and born into the family of God, and have a 2 Corinthians 5.17 heart, where the old heart is taken out and it's replaced with a new one, and their heart is changed, therefore their mind is changed, therefore their morality is changed. You know, the Lord can use anybody, and I'm, I'm living proof of that. But well, we have assistance and we have power through the Holy Spirit. Every Christian has access to that power. We receive it at salvation. But a lot, I'm afraid a lot of times we just forget that um, we have that power in our life. We have authority through Christ. We have power in the Holy Spirit. I worked in a bank at that time. And I began seeing uh, a lot of Spanish workers come through the bank. And they, they had a big problem, you know, communicating. But to make things easier for, for me and for them both, I began to have this real desire to learn Spanish. And I thought it was just for my job. And uh, anybody who knew me would, would tell you that I never stuck to anything when I was younger. Uh, so when, even myself, when I started trying to learn Spanish, I was like, this won't last. Well, I couldn't put it down. Uh, the Lord would not let me put it down. He would not get it out of my mind, let me put it out of my mind to stop learning Spanish. And Jesus was saying, look under the field, look under the field. It's not just money that we put in an offering plate. It's people that we're going to read. But Jesus is still back here with this Samaritan woman telling her all that she's done. They know that if they get this sin sick man to Jesus, he can heal his body and heal his spirit and make him ever with whole. Y'all come on, Jesus is back here. Let's go. Get him back here. Come on, come on. Let's go. I flip through their pictures often because without a vision, the people perish. Uh, once I got with the mission board, I went back to work. That that day, I told them, uh, you know, I told them what was happening. I said, you know, I've got to, I've got to have a couple of weeks off for orientation. They told me no, and so I had to make a decision at that point. I had to decide whether I was going to do what the Lord wanted me to do, what He was pointing me towards, what He had already started me on, 
Or was I going to live comfortably? When God called us to the country of Thailand, we put everything we had on the market. We sold our home. We, I sold my coon dogs, my, uh, all my guns, and my tree stands. Everything that we had, we sold and separated ourselves unto the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that when our support comes, we can depart for the field. And the Lord is taking care of me. I went from making pretty good money to making nothing. I didn't have any support at that time. But I've never, ever had a need that the Lord has not met. There's no people willingly coming to the church. You have to do like God intended for us to do and go get them. Amen. You know, we all have a different personality. We all have a different set of friends. We all have a different path to walk. But God knows who we are. He knows where we're going. And He puts people in that path for us to talk to. We were to look on a little farther after Jesus dealt with the woman at the well. He began to deal with His disciples. He looks at His disciples and He says, Say not ye there yet four months. And then cometh harvest. I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already unto harvest. If we were to I ask you to do this, can uh, those of you that got a picture, would you hold them up? We're not getting all cares back, we're not getting crazy. But hold them up. What you have in your hand is what I, what God has given me as a mission. When I look at these pictures, I don't just look at a picture of a person. And say, oh, you know, they, they have such a hard life. I look at these pictures and I don't see the, uh, the place that they live. I don't look at Joseph's house and think, oh, I want to go build them a nice new house. I don't look at their condition and say, I wish I could get them out of their family. What I do look at is I look at their heart and I realize that many of them that you were holding up in your hand this, this morning, if they were to die right now, many of them would spend eternity in hell. What is the gospel? Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 3 says it's the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. And it's, it's, it seems so, it seems too easy. We sometimes we look at that and we go, there's got to be more to it than that. It has to be. There's got to be something I have to do. There's got to be something that I can add to it. And so that's where every religion in the world is. You'll never, there's, there's many, many religions, many denominations, many other things in the world that you'll see. But it comes down to two things. One of them is what we're doing to get ourselves to heaven. And the other side is I'm trusting what Christ already did for me on the cross. He's got a burden. He's under a load. And it's heavy. This man didn't get to shake his hand, so he's done. <laughs> something simple, something simple, and shaking a hand has offended this man. We have lost sight. So what are you mad about? Because this man, and I'm not mad, but I'm telling you, this man is still sick. This man is still hurting. This man is still going to hell because we have not offended Oh God. Great peace have they that was thy law, and nothing, nothing, nothing shall offend thee. This pastor is laboring. This pastor is struggling under the weight of this lost soul. He cannot get him there. Who is going to get on board and help this pastor get this lost man to that Savior? And I'll take this fight, I'm going to go to a foreign country and give the gospel. You may not even need to go to a foreign country. You may just need to go down the road. I don't know who lives in this house right over here. Who lives in the house right there? Anybody ever witnessed me? So, Brother Jack got offended and he sat down. And he's quit on God. Now, he ain't left the church. He's still a member of the church. He's still sitting here. He's, he's blown up. He's mad. He's puffed up. He's so bitter he won't even shake the pastor's hand. He is bitter. He's not helping anymore. But it still hasn't changed. This man is still sick. This man is still palsy. This man is still dying in his sins and he's still going to hell. And Jesus is still back here with the Samaritan woman. It is everybody's responsibility. That's your cue to get up and quit being a 3S Christian, sitting and soaking and souring on God and get this man to the Savior. Amen! That's good preaching. Get that sick man. Hey, church, 
that Jesus has moved over here because he's saved. God, that's the miracle. Hey, he's back here now, church. Hey, he's not the Samaritan woman. He's left Samaria. He's over here in Jerusalem again. Get that sick man down here. He's needed to get to the Savior. Where the child of God will stand one day and give an account for what we have done as a born-again child of God for the Lord Jesus Christ while we are here on this earth. And God is looking among this church for people who are willing to serve Him in another way, in other places. He's looking for faithful Christians. He can say, I can use that person. I can use that person. I want them to go. Before we have churches like yours that support us financially and in prayer so that we can go places they're not going to get to go. But you guys can't go start a church in Thailand. You've got to take the church here. I mean, if you took the whole church and went, you wouldn't have one here. That wouldn't be the way God had for it. He wants us to be able to send others. And that's where Worldwide Missions comes in, in a local church. Thank you for giving to the Lord. We are all lives that have been changed.